cost of food, the groceries are up 20 percent over the last three years. And while inflation and interest rates are coming down, the cost of groceries, the cost of gas, the cost of ga uh, housing is still impacting a lot of households and families right across Ontario. So I could wait maybe a couple of years to be able to provide some relief. I think the relief has to happen now, and that's why I'm giving back $200 for every taxpayer in Ontario, plus $200 for every child under 18. That's some 15 million people that will get a $200 check, some $3 billion at a time that they need it most. And so I think this is going to go a long way helping those families struggling with the cost of living. Uh, but you're still adding s over $6 billion to the deficit, and since uh, the Ford government took power in, in 2018, the provincial debt is up 36% uh, to $429 billion. So is it really a good idea to, to not pay down that debt when you can? Because that's quite a, a burden. It's, and you got, as you guys say, it's the highest subnational debt in the world. We're helping people at a time when they need help the most. And by the way, our economy, in that same period you just calculated, has grown by over $300 billion. So in fact, our debt as a proportion of our economy has actually gone down. In fact, we've seen the lowest debt to our economy in over a decade. And our barn costs have come down. In fact, our barn costs are coming down about $1.2 billion this year relative to our 2024 budget forecast. In fact, $4 billion lower than, uh, th than we had predicted just in the 2024 budget. So this is real money that, uh, you know, while people are struggling, when the costs of many things are high, affordability crisis in, in Ontario and beyond, you hear from many, I've talked to a lot of people right across Ontario, and many are struggling to pay the bills. So this is a time when we can step in and help them at a time where we also are in a good, strong fiscal position. We got a credit rating upgrade to AA from DBRS. We've had the lowest uh, interest expense in some time. We see, if Ontario were a country, we'd be one of the top 20 countries in the world, and we're one of the few, if not the only one, that has a path to balance that is getting credit rating upgrades and managing people's money uh, responsibly. And by the way, <clears throat> we're able to do this because our taxpayer revenue has gone up and our deficits and our borrowing has gone down. So if not now, I don't know when. What's it going to cost taxpayers for you guys to mail out those checks? Uh, we don't know that number. I just tabled the, uh, the fall economic statement today and if passed, you know, we have to put it through the legislature, uh, which will then enable us to do some of the work to calculate those costs. With housing, I didn't hear you mention housing in your speech, uh, except for a slight mention to, uh, talking about the federal government. I thought this was like a number one priority for this government. Um, is the, am I missing something? Is there something that you are directly doing to try to increase housing starts? We're doing many, many things, and we've talked about it uh, uh, many times. We'll continue to talk about it. You know, I mentioned the, uh, uh, the Housing Enabling Water and Sewage Fund, uh, which is a big thing. In fact, it was the biggest thing that municipalities asked us to do to enable them to allow for more homes to get built. Uh, we delivered that. In fact, it's been very successful. The money is flowing and municipalities are using that money. We put together the Housing Infrastructure Program in, in the budget, uh, which that money is now starting to flow. Uh, we're working with municipalities to cut the red tape, put in the conditions so that we get faster permitting uh, because that's one of the big challenges. We're obviously working with the federal government um, to get more uh, collaboration with them so we can <clears throat> tap into some of the money that they're putting forward. This is all hands on deck. You know, housing is a component of our infrastructure build. It's not just housing. It's the hospitals, the $50 billion that we're putting in the to hospitals, it's the 16 billion that we're putting into building more schools, it's the 70 billion that we're putting into build transit, and another 30 billion for highways, all in our capital plan over the next 10 years. This is a province that, and a government, that is gonna can not relent on building not just houses, but uh, healthcare, building uh, uh, transit, building schools, building everything that we need to support growing communities. Hi, Minister. You said, if not now, when, in terms of providing relief to Ontarians. 
Did you give any thought or would it not have been more prudent to wait to the other side of the American election, given the anxiety I know the government's expressed about the possibility of uh, increased or new tariffs and the pressure that could put on the Ontario economy? You know, uh, you know we'll let uh, democracy work next week. Uh, you know, I always build in prudence into to our forecasts so we show uh, different scenarios. But let me maybe clarify a little bit more when I talk about providing supports for, for people and for businesses. You know, we, we started very early on when prices of things started to go up. Uh, if you'll recall, back in the spring of 2022, we cut the gas tax. That was one of the first early measures that we provided. We've been cutting taxes and fees since we came into government, but we really leaned in when, when uh, prices started to go up. Uh, we've obviously, we've increased the minimum wage. We've indexed uh, payments for people on disability, low-income seniors to inflation. No other government's ever done that. So they're seeing increased payments. We're helping there. We've got, for those who don't drive, the uh, one integrated fare so that, uh, you know, taking transit is cheaper in the GTA. We obviously took the license plate stickers off that help, uh, you know, make life a little bit more affordable for the people who uh, drive in this, in this province. So we've done many things. But I think this is just another example of how we're putting more money back into people's pockets. We're cutting taxes, cutting fees, and making life a little bit better for, for people in Ontario. You did mention the, the index to inflation for um, ODSP. I, I know that you know that advocates have been saying that's not nearly sufficient. If Ontario is in such a good place, why can the government not go beyond that kind of inflationary increase? Well, let's, uh, let's, let's say we, we have, and we will continue to do so. And let's, go back a little bit, the, for example, for the disability program, we've increased funding by 17%, payments by 17%, which includes a one-time 5% increase, and it also includes, just this past July, a 4.5% increase. You know, no other government before us ever indexed those payments to inflation. We're the first, so we're providing support in a meaningful way. Hey, Minister, uh, Liam Case with the Canadian Press. Uh, with all the good news you're sharing today, are you setting the table to balance the books this spring? Uh, no, I'm, I'm setting the table for forecasting uh, what we've uh, got right in front of us, which is a almost $7 billion improvement over the planning horizon in terms of the, uh, the fiscal plan. You know, we continue to be on positive watch with credit rating agencies, Moody's and S&P for upgrade. You know, that helps lower our interest costs. And just yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, the financial accountability officer, you know, uh, put out a report that validated what we've been saying, that we now have, for the first time in a decade, the lowest bartering costs in Canada of any province, that we've got the first up credit rating upgrade in almost 20 years in Ontario, that our fiscal uh, credit ratings are improving, which allows us to reduce things like interest expense. I mean, we reduced interest expense by a billion dollars. A big headline in March and go to the election early. Did you say always lowering your revenues? I hope you didn't say that. No, no, no your, your, your revenue projections are always lower than the oh, actual your revenues. projections I mean, are lower. You always lowball the, uh, wisely, well, we would say, conservatively, but uh, you know, you always lowball it so you, you, you overperform. Under promise and overperform. Jeff, you're, you're a very smart uh, reporter, you know. I wish that was the case uh, that, uh, you know, I'd hope to be able to balance sooner, but we, you know, because of the high interest rates, the rapid Bank of Canada increase, increase in rates, you saw that the impact on our economy, it slowed down our growth. So rather than balancing, I had a, a $9.8 billion deficit. So I try to do uh, what I think is prudent and responsible is put out the numbers that I, I uh, forecast as the best that we have based on the information at the time. Do I hope we beat our numbers? Absolutely, but hope is not a strategy. This is our, our plan going forward. Hey, good afternoon, Minister Colin DeBella from Global News. The LCBO seems poised to lose hundreds of millions of dollars over the next couple of years due to a variety of factors. Part of it was obviously the strike, but also the changes that your government has made in how alcohol is accessed in this province. Can you guarantee that as a result of those losses, no LCBO employee will lose their job and that no LCBO will close its doors? Well, folks, there's your classic Colin DeMello. Can you guarantee? Do you have certainty? I'll tell you what I can guarantee <clears throat> is that... Um, I have a lot of confidence in the LCBO. And you know, when you make changes to a market that's basically been uh, in a monopoly uh, structure for almost 100 years, when you inherit a very flawed um, a monopoly agreement that the previous Liberal government made with the, with the beer store, and you know, you execute opening up uh, the market, which 
I think is good for the LCBO. As you can see today, we showed that the revenues are up, the bottom line is up for taxpayers. You know, this is good for convenience stores. They've told me this is a game changer, that their products are, they're selling products in their convenience stores. They're able to hire more people, so that's good for jobs. It's good for small businesses. And you know who else it's good for? And primarily, consumers. You, you, you folks have, all Ontarians have more convenience and choice. So I think this is a real positive evolution. We campaigned on this and we're delivering on that promise. Okay, so no guarantees about closures or layoffs. I uh, wanted to ask about the $200 checks. Hey, 200 bucks isn't enough. Why didn't you guys go higher? I mean, $3 billion for a province uh, that, that earned about $6.9 billion extra in revenues. It seems like you could have done more. Why did you limit yourself at $200? Uh, why didn't you go even higher and spend that you know, $7 billion in additional revenue and give people maybe $400 a person? You know, we're, we're giving a $200 check to, to 15 million people in this province, you know, at a time when they really need this relief, in my judgment. At a time when, uh, you know, we've seen, because of the rapid increases in the Bank of Canada rates, which have uh, caused, uh, among other things, to slow down our economy, that uh, because of many factors, our inflation hit uh, levels that we hadn't seen in 30, 40 years. You know, all these things have, uh, you know, put a lot of pressure on, on the hardworking people of Ontario. You know, I talked to someone the other day. Um, she phoned me at 10 o'clock. You know, she's struggling with payments. She, uh, she's got kids. Um, you know, it's going to help her. Uh, I talked to someone that the gas tax cut, you know, they, they, they really, they say, boy, every time I fill up, you know, that, that gas tax cut is helping me. And I really think all the things that we've done, are really important to tell people that we are we are there for you. We're trying to help you, and you know, for a lot of people, uh, two hundred dollars is going to go a long way. Hi, Minister. So, um, um, part of the reason why the deficit was uh, for this fiscal year was much smaller than what was expected was because of um, uh, increased tuition revenue from international students. Um, so, considering the federal government cuts um, in the international student visas for, for the next year, are you worried that this might impact the province's finances and um, increase, increase the deficit again? Well, we'll take a look at uh, the numbers. Those are recently announced changed. And as I said in the House, the mismanagement of the federal government uh, on the immigration file. You know, I'm the product of uh, immigrants. I acknowledged my dad's cousin who's coming over from Europe, Peter Um, You know, this country, uh, apart from indigenous, uh, came from somewhere else. Uh, so, you know, that immigration consensus is very important. Yes, that's going to have an impact. Uh, we'll analyze it. But, you know, I did, uh, we did factor that into our numbers in 2024, the budget. Uh, I put us to set aside $1.3 billion to help colleges and universities. And, you know, uh, we'll look at various scenarios. But like many things, uh, we are going to navigate. I have confidence that we're going to navigate this province uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, probidity as we continue to look at all scenarios that might impact the finances of Ontario. Thank you. So uh, you are also keeping the tuition freeze for post-secondary education institutions, and um, there was no uh, additional investment since the $1.3 billion announced uh, in the budget. Um, so, so I guess the question is, like, why prioritize initiatives such as the, the checks, the rebate checks, instead of making more investments in the, in the post-secondary education sector? You know, it's not either or. I mean, we're making investments right across in post-secondary education, K-12, to you know, big increases in education funding, big increases in our health care budget. We announced helping families with the fertility tax credit and the fertility support program. We're helping... Uh, you know, create more doctors in the in the province with medical care, uh, medical uh, university seats, increasing the number, uh, making more spots open for Ontarians and Canadians. Uh, the Learn and Stay program to encourage uh, more family doctors will pay their expenses if they stay in their communities uh, for the next five years. You know, that's going to create uh, literally uh, millions more uh, uh, patients being rostered in Ontario. So we have a plan. Whenever I, you know, it's not one particular area that we're investing, it's right across the piece. And, uh, you know, colleges and universities are just another area that we continue to support. Hi there, Alan Hale from Queen's Park today. Um, so the FES document uh, really points out the impact that um, the strike, the LCBO strike, and uh, the, the subsequent collective agreement had on um, lost revenues from the LCBO over the next two years. Um, 
how much of the $540 million that are going to be lost in revenues from the LCBO are you laying on the, at the feet of uh, LCBO workers and their union? Well, we've update the, updated. I'm not laying any of that on the feet of uh, the workers. You know, we did a deal. We bargained in good faith. I think it was good for workers, good for Ontarians. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, there's also these costs are reflected in the, the numbers I put up of for collective bargaining, other aspects of it. Uh, obviously, consumption patterns have changed. But one thing I've I will tell you, I have confidence, not only the LCBO, but the workers at the LCBO. I think they've got great stores. They've got a great online experience. Um, and we continue to be, uh, you know, a, 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 an operation that I think will continue to provide um, good returns for taxpayers. As you saw in the numbers that I put forward today, uh, the, the, the share for, for the LCBO and the alcohol system will now expand because of the agreements that we signed. So I think this is really positive for not just the, uh, the workers at the LCBO, the LCBO itself, uh, but as I said, it's good for um, small business, the convenience stores uh, tomorrow. We're uh, going to be uh, opening uh, uh, access to grocery stores in this great province, uh, another step in our modernization plan. And ultimately, as I said before, the big winner is the consumer. You've said before that the Building Ontario Fund will be announcing its first investment this year. Is it still on track to do that? And if so, what can you tell us about the project? You know, certainly uh, standing up that agency, we, we've got the uh, new CEO we, who's starting in a couple of weeks. They're working on a pipeline of transactions, and I hope within the not-too-distant future we'll be able to announce some of those transactions. Catherine de Clerica, The Trillium. You're banking on about $3 billion coming from the federal government's capital gains inclusion rates. Um, what happens if that government changes before that is passed? Well, you know, the, the advice that I've gotten is that uh, these are material amounts that they've passed through various phases, and so there's the expectation that that will continue to go through. And so it's my job to say, uh, what am I going to do with that? And that's why, in part, you know, because our taxes uh, are up uh, uh, and our revenues are up, that uh, we're going to give that back to the hardworking taxpayers of this province. Okay. And um, why is the government going through the trouble of creating an alternate to process for families who don't qualify for the Canada Child Benefit to get a $200 rebate check if that's only going to apply to the wealthiest of families? It's comply to everybody who uh, uh, it's the cleanest way to do. It's comply to a lot of people and we want to make sure whether you're a tax filer or that there's uh, you know that you have the opportunity to legitimately uh, qualify for the $200 check. This will be the last reporter question. Hello, Minister Brian Lilly, Toronto Sun. A um, few of my colleagues have tried to get you to say that your um, deficit, you, that you'll really come to balance by the next budget. I'll be much more blunt and say I just don't believe you. I think that you're going to, and I'll ask you to comment on this. Even after spending $3 billion in Dougie dollars, uh, you could only get the deficit this year down to $6.6 .6 billion. That includes using a $4.3 billion drop in what's loosely labeled other government revenue, your $1.7 billion contingency fund and a drop of $700 million from government enterprises like the LCBO and OLG. So that before your revenue projections uh, are, are shown to be low, you're already above the $6.6 .6 billion. So convince me that you aren't already headed towards a balanced budget by the end of the year when you table your spring budget. I can't give you any insurance because uh, I don't know what the future is going to hold, Brian. I think what I do and I've done forthrightly uh, to push back on your comments that you don't believe me, uh, forthrightly that uh, I uh, put together budgets and documents based on the best information I have. Uh, like any government, we, we always put in some prudence because we don't know exactly what will happen in the future. Uh, you don't know if what's around the corner, but that's that's how you responsibly budget, whether you're in the private sector or the public sector. So uh, I'm going to do my best, of course, always to to beat those numbers. And uh, along with my colleagues, you know, we're very focused on, you know, growing the economy, growing the pie, being competitive. We're not an island here in in Ontario. We compete uh, globally for capital. We compete for jobs. We compete for uh, talent. And uh, the best thing that we can do is put in the conditions for economic growth. You've heard the Premier 
uh, speak about that over and over again. Our, my caucus colleagues and the Premier and all of us really are working day in, day out to make that a reality. And if that allows us to uh, beat our numbers, well, that's great. Uh, I, I don't say the, the, that I don't believe you disparagingly. It just it reads like an old-style uh, Paul Martin, Jean Chrétien style budget or economic statement, under, or under promise, over perform, uh, as uh, Jeff Gray said. Uh, on the issue of immigration, beyond foreign students, uh, you know, we've got we're going to see a some kind of drop in immigration. And while your document does acknowledge that inflation and the higher uh, tax revenue from personal tax, sales tax, all of that has contributed to this windfall that you've got. Part of that is also driven by population growth. If we see a slowdown in population growth, what does that do to the province's finances? You know, we're still analyzing that, but let me tell you, we're going from a very high number to still a very high number. Uh, let me say a couple other things. Uh, it's been a while since I've been compared to Paul Martin or Jean Chrétien, so um, and that, that's an interesting uh, comparison. Uh, I will also say, you know, the, the, uh, so it'll take time, not only uh, for the, the, the numbers to roll through the system, but also to analyze, you know, how that impacts Ontario, because a lot of people want to come to Ontario, so we'll have to see that. And don't forget, population growth, uh, you know, does, does have a claim on services and costs in, the, in, in, our, in our province. Um, we want to encourage uh, immigration. We want to encourage uh, people to come to Ontario. And what I will continue to do, apart from analyzing the impacts of that, is we're not going to relent on making sure that we've got the homes, that we've got the infrastructure, the subways, the transit, the schools, the health care, uh, the highways. Because, uh, you know, when you stop building like the previous government, you know, really built very little and taxed a lot, you know, you, you've got to, we're playing catch up, and but we're not going to stop so that we can continue to bring